How's it going, everyone? It's Sam. There's something scary going on. It's scary because it is so like the last cycle, and a lot of people don't really pay attention to it. Uh, Bitcoin has done exactly what it's doing right now before. Even just last cycle, we had a very, very, very similar move to where we are right now. I want to show you it. I also want to talk about Grayscale dumping a lot of Bitcoin and some other cool news as well. If you don't mind, hit subscribe. Turn on the bell notification underneath the video so you can see future videos just like this one as soon as I make them. Also, there's going to be a link to Margex underneath the video in case you want to start trading cryptocurrency. You can do it over on Margex. You can sign up. You don't have to KYC. And if you've already signed up before, we are getting ready to do an airdrop with some tokens here. So maybe you want to deposit again, start trading a little bit again. And you can also sign up other people. You can refer other people and then you get some of their trading fees as well. I don't know if you knew that, but it's something that you can do. There's also going to be a link down there to CoinW as well. In case you want to try out CoinW, they allow you to trade futures and they allow you to trade with leverage. And they give you a bonus. So if you deposit 100 USDT or more and do a futures trade, you get some USDT as well. I think it's 100 USDT. Now, Bitcoin's price has just been going kind of sideways, kind of down recently. You can see for the last, well, let's check it. From February 28 to now. So was that all of March, all of April, half of May. So two and a half months, 70, 74 days, something like that. We've been going sideways, right? We moved up 20, 30%, then moved down, up, down, and then continued down here. We're right around 60,000 right now. This is eerily similar to what we've seen in the past. This is last bear market. So back during uh, 2020, right? We went all the way up to 13, then back down to three, right? And then from here, from about the time of the Bitcoin halving, we moved up. We moved up, we moved up. We came all the way up to about $12,000. Okay, so we had made a good uh, a good move up to almost the previous high, right? Maybe 60, 70% of that come up from 3K, 4X up to 12, up to 12K, which is very similar to what we've done now. We went from 15.5 up to 60. Uh, we eventually went up to 75. But then we had a 20% haircut here. You can see that right here. We had a couple days where we fell down uh, about 18%. A lot of people were scared, right? I mean, keep in mind though, this is just where we were like a couple couple weeks before. You can see July, July 26, and then about uh, September 7, we went down. So very similar to what we've done right now, which is, hey, a month and a half later or so, we went back down to where we were. We pumped up, then came back down. And then what happened? What happened? I think we all know. We meant we went on a massive run, but we took months to start that, right? From July 27 through October 21, right? So basically three months, just short of three months, we went sideways. Sure, there were some 20% moves in the meantime, but we went up, then we came down, and then we moved up, then we came down. Very similar to this, a very similar sized move to this as well. I mean, we're talking 20%. This was about a 20% move. Uh, so we made a very similar move, and then what happened? We went from 12K pretty much straight up. Of course, there were some dips, right? There were some 20% dips. There were some, you can see this one, from 42 down to 28, so maybe a 30% dip, but we went all the way up to 64. Okay, so we did a 5.3x. We went up significantly after that happened, but it took a while. People were bored. We It seemed like we got some really good price action because we made a 4x, and then it just went sideways for a while. People lost interest, and then we had a massive run. Now, of course, there's choppiness during the bull market too, so be ready for that. But that seems very similar to what we're doing right now. I mean, again, we went 4x from the bottom. Now it's taken about two and a half months where we're just going sideways, but we have had some 20% moves in the meantime. But if this is, if the last cycle is any indication, you know, right after the halving, we have some choppiness, we have some sideways action, and then we make another move up. Now, of course, not every cycle is the same, but that's what we've seen in the past. Cycle after cycle, 
it's, it seems to repeat. Uh, the the same price action seems to happen, and it almost it almost takes some people off guard because it's so similar. But uh, I think just like TA, it's kind of a self fulfilling prophecy where enough people pay attention to this that typically they start buying because they think a move's coming, and then it starts moving up, right? So this is the time where you do want to stay focused because if you just tune out, if you panic sell, or or even if you think that Maybe there's a better place for your money. That's often when Bitcoin leaves you in the dust. I had, as much as I love Bitcoin, I had like a back of the brain type moment during the bear market that I was like, uh, Bitcoin hasn't moved in a while. What if I just moved it over to you know, Google or Amazon because they were at pretty low valuations at the time? And I thought, no, 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 I'm not going to do that. That's stupid. Why would I do that? Because I know a big move's coming. But there was like a 5% part of me in the back of the brain that was like, ooh, just do it, just do it. But I said, no, that's that's dumb. And then, of course, we made this massive move. But there's going to be part of you, and it's just a question of whether you can shove that part of you down or how much of you is that uh, part of you that's saying to sell right now, right? There's always a little bit of you that says, oh, maybe this bull market's done, right? Maybe it's 0.1%, maybe it's 5%, maybe it's 10%. Maybe you're antsy because you're someone... It's maybe a little bit ADD or ADHD and needs to go on to the thing that's pumping, but you don't want to do that. When we're down like this for a while, when we've just trended sideways, that's like a loaded spring. You want to be there for when it explodes up. Now, of course, we could see more haircuts in the meantime. Maybe we take out this prior low. Maybe that's what happens, but I am still very bullish for this bull market. Now, that's why recently, over the last couple of weeks, I have placed some more longs, especially when we were in this upper 50s range. I placed more longs. I added to long positions because I think we're going to get a big move up. And when you've already taken a 20, 25% haircut, that's typically a better place to put a long than when you're at all time highs. Because it's easy to retrace 20% when you're at an all time high and you haven't seen any kind of, um, any kind of consolidation period. So if you want to do that, again, there are links underneath the video, but let's move on. We had grayscale dumping, and it's hard to know exactly when they dump. Like, it's it's really odd because we have T plus one, but sometimes it takes longer. Sometimes it seems to be a little bit faster. I think I think the ETFs play a little bit of games here, but they, grayscale, lost $104 million in Bitcoin yesterday. So, you know, they had those couple days where they actually had positive inflows, and then we revert back to the mean which is $103 million outflow. So yeah, we're just going to continue to probably see this dwindle down. Maybe eventually it turns positive. But at this point, we did have another big outflow day, which, you know, causes some selling pressure in Bitcoin, causes the price to go down a little bit. Uh, HODL 15 Capital, who we have followed since the ETFs were approved, didn't actually post this. This is Invest Answers. So I went to his page. He has not updated yesterday. Hopefully he's okay or she's okay. But... Uh, yeah, we'll have to see what the other ETFs did after he posts. But right now, yeah, a big outflow day from Grayscale. Obviously, they've just lost so much in AUM. They've really uh, shot themselves in the foot with this one because they've lost so much of the underlying asset. And if you think Bitcoin's going to do well, it would have made sense to lower the fees and then held on to the asset because when the price goes up, your fees are going to go up exponentially as well. Now, I think we should spotlight this, you know, uh, and I have something big that I want to talk about that's kind of outside of crypto after this, but is financially related. But I like to do this kind of spotlight. We did this a few days ago where someone DCA throughout the bear market and got to 0.25 Bitcoin. Now this person on the uh, Bitcoin Reddit thread says, after two years of DCA and saving on everything, I finally achieved my goal of 0.2 Bitcoin. That is awesome. So I've talked about this in videos before. 0.2 Bitcoin is a significant milestone, especially with the price we're at now, because that's $10,000 worth. $10,000 is enough for a used car. $10,000 is obviously a psychological milestone as well, because it is five figures, right? This is more than most people can invest. Right? Most people live paycheck to paycheck. Most people don't have money to invest in hard assets or any assets, right? They think that, a, you know, a depreciating asset is a good asset. They think buying a car makes sense because they're not blowing it at the casino or drinking it, right? But 
this is an actual appreciating asset and having 0.2 Bitcoin is significant. When you consider how high this will probably go in the future, of course, it depends on uh, your bullishness where you think Bitcoin's going to go. But if you do think we're going to have a million dollar Bitcoin, well, this is a significant, significant chunk of money, $200,000 worth of Bitcoin one day. And of course, we'll probably continue to grow after a million dollars. But even right now, $10,000 in one asset gives you significant exposure to Bitcoin. Now, are you going to be able to retire on this? I guess it depends on where you live and how you live. In the US or in the UK, probably not. Even when Bitcoin's at a million dollars, you know, that's still that's still $200,000. That's hard to retire on. But right now, you know, that is enough to start a business. If you have some great idea or if you need to buy a lawnmower, for example, and start your own business, this is giving you options. This is giving you hope. This is giving you freedom. This allows you to have some cash. If your government uh, overreaches, you have a piggy bank that you can take anywhere in the world. You can send it to people for work. Um across the world in a split second for a few dollars without any government overreach. So this is a significant milestone. Remember that. Now, if you can stack more than this, great. Whoever this is, right? Uh, you got to point two Bitcoin, unless you're significantly uh, disproportioned in your assets, like in, in less you need to put money somewhere else, you're probably going to keep on stacking Bitcoin. So yeah, point two was great you're probably going to hit 0.25. Maybe it takes a little bit longer because we're in the bull run, but you're probably going to hit 0.25. Now, at some point, maybe you want to diversify, right? That's kind of at a point where I'm at, where I stack so hard during this bear market. And I, I've gotten some flack from this in the comment section, but I stack so hard during this bear market. And I continue to buy all the way through, stacking more than I ever thought that I would. So now, it's a large portion of my portfolio. Bitcoin is a large portion of my overall net worth. So now I'm starting to take some of the cash and invest it into other parts of or other assets. Like I'm looking at real estate. I've been buying stocks consistently through the bear market too, uh, but I'm looking to cash up a little bit too. I realize some people are like, why would you ever do that when you could be buying Bitcoin? The fact is I have a lot of Bitcoin, like I said, and I think everyone's a little bit different with how much of their net worth they can actually put into Bitcoin without going crazy. There's some people that are just built for it that can put everything into Bitcoin. Maybe they have a $300,000 net worth and they have five Bitcoin, right? They have like only Bitcoin and then a few thousand dollars in their account. I'm not built like that. I cannot have 100% Bitcoin. I have a family, right? I have a wife, I have a house, I, I have to be ready for some downturns. So while some people put everything into Bitcoin, you know, some people want to diversify a little bit, get some cash flow as well in there. So that way, just in case there's volatility, they still have money to put into Bitcoin. Because remember, this is a marathon, not a sprint. You don't want to, you don't want to FOMO in at all time highs if you can buy in when everyone's bearish. And luckily, I was able to do that. Let me know your thoughts on that. You know, are you still accumulating? Are you someone that's always putting in, you know, maybe a couple hundred dollars every single paycheck? You don't care the price? Or is this something that you look at a little bit maybe more strategically based on timing, based on pricing uh, when you'll buy? Let me know in the comment section. And last thing I want to hit on. Okay, Tesla just announced something big. I know that I covered Tesla a little bit yesterday. But this is specifically related to the customer side. Uh, this is not... Tesla the business, I mean, it helps the business, but this is helping everyone that wants to possibly buy a Tesla one day. Starting today, Tesla is offering a loan rate, a 0.99 APR for the all new Model Y. This is in the US, and this is for finance terms between three years and six years for new vehicles. You have to place this in about three weeks, and I wonder, I wonder why this is, why they are making a mad sprint. Maybe maybe they're just going to renew it and they just want to create some extra sales, right? Obviously, that's what they want. But I'm curious um, what the thinking is, right? Is there a specific reason? Maybe they are going to launch the new Model Y, the refresh, and they're trying to sell some more vehicles before that refresh. I saw an article a couple months ago that said that they're not going to do that anytime soon, but that's exactly what you'd say if you didn't want to discourage people from buying the Model Y now, right? Oh no, we're not gonna do the new one anytime soon, buy the one that we have right now. But this is significant, 0.99% APR, this makes it pretty much like a, a free loan, 
right? I mean, when you consider inflation's 3%, this is actually like a negative 2% loan. It makes more sense to buy it and pay that 1% than it does to uh, pay it in cash. So this means the monthly car payment before any incentives and savings is now 15% lower than it was yesterday. Monthly car payment before the loan rate of 0.99% was 706 per month on the rear wheel drive and 756 per month on the all wheel drive. Now it's only 600 and 643. So, I mean, it's still more expensive than a lot of people can afford, but this is a significant cost savings. Like we're looking at different cars for my wife uh, over the next year. And this was already in the race, but now, you know, this is significantly cheaper. This is before the $7,500 uh, EV credit and the proper gas and maintenance savings. That is another big thing. I, we have a Tesla now. We also have a Camry. The fact is we still have to go get the oil change on the Camry. We have to get some maintenance done every once in a while. In almost 30,000 miles, the only thing we've ever had go wrong on the Tesla is we had to replace the tire a couple times because we hit nails a couple different times for some reason uh, on the road. And then we've also had to fill up the uh, windshield wiper fluid. That's it, right? You come, you come home, you plug it in, you leave, you come home, plug it in. 30,000 miles, you don't have to do anything. When I had the tire issue, I literally just called up Tesla because they don't give you an extra tire. So they'll come to you for free and tow your car. So I just called them. They came to my house, towed my car. We had to go pick it up like a day later, but everything was super easy. So, I mean, this is probably the nicest car to have if you want low maintenance. Of course, there are some other EVs too, but obviously Tesla is much further along than all the other EVs uh, and has just a lot better customer service in my opinion. So this is big, this is really cool. Uh, I'm, I'm excited for this. I think this will help them sell a lot more cars. And this is a big problem for a lot of people. This point, uh, this like 7% interest rate environment for cars and for homes is a big sticking point. A lot of people won't hear about this, I think, either. A lot of people, um, like normal people, won't realize, hey, I can now afford a Tesla. And I say normal people, people that aren't like in Tesla, that aren't paying attention to Tesla all the time. They won't hear about this and they won't realize that like, prices have come down, but everyone that's looking for maybe a second car or looking at Tesla's have been watching for a long time to see if they can afford it. Those cusp customers now will want to buy, I'm guessing. And if this goes well, I think this is going to be like a, <laughs> something that they can point to in their next earnings saying, uh, you know, our growth has slowed down over the last two years because of the high interest rates. And we can prove it because now we ran this 0.99% APR uh, promo and instead of selling, I don't know, uh, this is half a month or something, they sell maybe 400, $450,000 throughout, or 450,000 cars throughout the quarter. So maybe 7,500 cars every two weeks or 75,000 cars every two weeks. Instead of selling 75,000, we sold 120,000 because we had these low rates. And then they can kind of show, okay, when we get to a lower interest rate environment, this is really the variable that's causing us issues. When we get back to that lower interest rate, we can sell a lot more vehicles. We can start moving prices up even, most likely. So I think this is gonna be a big test for them to see, is this really the issue? Is like, just separate this one variable and see if this is the issue why we haven't been selling significantly more cars. So I think this is really interesting. This is like a little study for them. Maybe that is what it is, not a Model Y refresh, but a study so they can figure out, is this the problem, right? Now, let me know your thoughts on all this underneath the video. Let me know if you like these little tidbits about Tesla. I am invested in Tesla, so I do pay close attention to it. I'm also invested in Amazon and Google. Those are my three largest positions. I built them up significantly during the bear market. It was awesome because I got them at very low prices. I'm talking Amazon and Google almost moving in log step in the 80s. Now, Amazon, let's see. I think it's in the 180s, yeah, 187. So I'm up over 100% on some of those shares. Now, not all of them, some I bought in the hundreds, 120s. Same thing with Google, up to 170. So you wanna be able to take advantage. Again, that kind of comes back to the cash position. There's gonna be a bear market at some point for stocks and for crypto, and I wanna make sure that I play this bull run correctly so that I have some cash for it. 
you know, and I'm not selling Bitcoin right now. Like the stack that I bought during the bear market, I'm not selling that. But I am making sure that I have some cash. Uh, the money that I'm making right now, I'm not throwing everything into crypto right now because we have made a big move and I want to make sure that I have some cash to take advantage if we have some dips, which are always going to come. It's just a question of when, you know. Now, let me know your thoughts on this underneath the video. Let me know what you think about this mirroring of the last cycle and let me know if you're continuing to stack thank you so much again you can check out the links to marjax to coin w also there's a link to blowfin underneath the video as well if you haven't signed up for all those i would suggest it because they are great platforms thank you so much i will see you in the next video